If you happen to find a random picture in a book or a magazine of some of the beautifully colored tulip farms growing in Alkmaar, or come across a random YouTube video such as this one, in which the millions of cyclists in Amsterdam ride through its efficient and elaborate cycling lanes, or maybe one day you even somehow found your breath taken away as you gaze at the beautiful windmills in Zanskans. You might begin to ask yourself how such a small country has been able to maintain such beautiful landscapes and infrastructure, to the point where the country has been acknowledged worldwide as one of the best countries in the world, with cities known for their methodically innovative structures. This coastal country has managed to design brilliant infrastructure like the thousands of miles of bike lanes in the entire country, and the fantastic dams in Rotterdam along with several other innovations that have not only benefited the citizens economically and physically, they have also helped the entire nation stay afloat despite the best efforts of the forces of nature. It may even make you wonder why it may be possible for the Dutch to achieve this highly efficient country, and countries like the US or even yours can't. So let's take a look at why the Netherlands is amazingly well designed shouldn't even be as big. First of all, let's begin with the fact that the Netherlands shouldn't even be here. Well, a large part of it. You see, before the Netherlands was known for its innovative and creative city planning, it was notorious for its constant flooding. There are records of floods as far back as 838 that inundated a large part of the northwest of the Netherlands called Friesland. Thousands died amid the sweeping flood due to lack of good dikes to combat the raging waters, and thousands more would be swept away in several more floods which would prove not to be singular to Friesland, as similar floods swept through several parts of the country, like the particularly damaging flood that destroyed Walcheren in 1014, or St. Felix's flood that swept over 100,000 people away as it ran through large parts of Flanders and Zeeland. These floods are caused by the country's low elevation, as well as its close proximity to the North Sea. As they say, necessity is the mother of invention. And boy did the Dutch get inventive. Not only did they reclaim a large portion of the land from the swamps, marshes, and even in the sea, they also went about devising clever ways to prevent these floods that ravaged the nation for as long as they could remember. After the devastating North Sea Flood of 1953 which took the lives of over 2,500 people in the Netherlands, Belgium and even the United Kingdom while destroying tens of thousands of buildings over 150 hectares of land, the Dutch got fed up with the damage and decided to build the Delta Works. The Delta Works are a series of dams, sloughs, dikes, locks, and storm surge barriers along with four inlets. Harving Viet Dam, Rauwards Dam, Ooster Scheldeckering, and Veer Sagdam, that took almost 50 years to build but eventually put an end to the constant flooding in the country. Not only was the nation able to prevent the flooding, they were also able to reclaim as much as 20% more landmass, on which they have been able to make the most of. They did this with the use of windmill to drain the water out of four areas they wanted to reclaim, Rotterdam, Dardrecht, Middelburg, and Bergen, up zoom. Funny enough, the soil created during this process is perfect for the creation of tulips, which is why the flower is famous in the area. Such structures have earned the Delta Works acclaim worldwide, with the Oosterschlechtering being labeled the largest surge barrier in the world, as well as the largest seaport in all of Europe. That is the port of Rotterdam, which is larger than the whole of Manhattan. City Structure Apart from ensuring that the nation stays afloat, the country took a different approach to the grid-like design of most American cities when it designed the layout of the nation. The grid-like layout system which is designed with a lot of horizontal and vertical lines, which was made out like this in order to optimize profitability. This layout prioritizes commercial use of the space for motor vehicles, rather than residential or more pedestrian uses. This is in contrast to the system in the Netherlands that has to optimize its small mass due to its proportionally large population. You see, the entire landmass of the Netherlands only comes up to about 41.5 square kilometers, which hosts the over 17 million people that make it one of the most densely populated countries in all of Europe. In order to accommodate its population, the Netherlands had to get creative yet again. 
As such, although the country's layout isn't too dissimilar to the grid-like structure found in most cities in the US, like Los Angeles and New York City, the layout of the Netherlands shows the intention to prioritize residents and pedestrians over personal or commercial motor vehicle use. This is perhaps why there's a prominent cycling culture in the Netherlands. In fact, with the expansive cycling infrastructure which provides for miles upon miles of cycle paths, tracks, and protected infrastructure throughout the entire country, it should come as no surprise that cycling is one of the most common and the fastest means of travel in the country. In the Netherlands, there are 23 million bikes to a person, which is more than one bike per person, and not only does this help them maintain their fitness, the preference to bikes over cars also ensures the nation inflicts minimal damage to their environment to motor vehicles. Impossible to replicate. You may think, wow, even if any of the cities in the US or elsewhere wanted to switch to this healthier and perhaps more conservative layout, it would be too impossible to execute. However, the Dutch once again show that it isn't so. A good case study for this is the city of Rotterdam which was razed to the ground following its destruction by the German Luftwaffe. Following the end of the war, the Dutch designed their rebuild to emphasize a more spacious and open modern city that focused more on accommodating cars and other motor vehicles. However, although it seemed that this may be the new city layout in other parts of the nation, the people of Rotterdam grew tired of the layout due to the high level of motor vehicle fatalities and the reduced cycling and walking activities in the city. Following this, the city was converted to allow more cycling in the city, just like the rest of the country, while also accommodating more public transport vehicles like trams and buses. Consequently, you can see the journey the Dutch took to get here. Placing several misfortunes and disasters not only helped a set of ingeniously innovative people to create the solutions to seemingly impossible problems. It also proved that they may not always get it right the first time. Sometimes you may need to learn from a mistake or two. That being said, they now enjoy the benefits of such innovative talents, which were applied to several trials, thereby building their way to one of the most amazingly built countries in the world.